You're watching On Demand. Please check the closing time before trying to vote or enter any competition or other interactivity in this programme, as it may not count and you may still be charged. Today on your Loose Women Live, it's Kay Adams. Nadia Sawala, Judy Love, and Mylene Class. Hello! Hello and welcome to your last Loose Women of the Week. We are live with you until 1.30 and what a show we've got for you. Here's what's uh, coming up, traditionally seen as a lifelong commitment, but would you discourage your child from getting married? Which one of us says yes? And as you can see, we've got a very special guest today, uh, Mylene Class. <laughs> and Mylene's going to be revealing how she turned the pain of four miscarriages into power by campaigning for a change in the law. And could taking up a new hobby be good for your health? We'll be revealing the things that we get up to in our spare time. Steady, Judy. Um, <laughs> <laughs> She's on. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Might be a fruity Friday. But <laughs> Mylene will be treating us to a special musical performance. Apparently, playing the piano is one of her hobbies. Who knew? <laughs> Who knew? <laughs> oh. It's the dreaded phone call. It is the dreaded phone call. I say this because apparently a quarter of 18 to 25 year olds actively avoid answering phone calls. And get this, six and 10 ignore their own parents. Judy, oh. would your children dare to ignore you? I mean, it sounds like you're talking about my life, honestly. <laughs> Do you know what? I love my babies, but I, my daughter, she's like 18 now, she's at that age. I will ring and ring and she won't answer or she will answer. She'll be like, oh, mom, mom. I'm busy. And I'm like, what exactly are you doing? And if she doesn't answer, it's on D&D, &D, like, do not disturb. All right. And I'm in my mind, I'm thinking, who is disturbing you? Your eyelash, <laughs> your eyelash booking or your nail booking? Like, what is... <laughs> They're just so... But she was saying to me that it's so consumed with, like, social media yeah. and everything that the phone doesn't stop. So I'm like, yeah, but I'm your priority, yeah? <laughs> Put me at the top and make sure you answer. My son, I think he just forgets where the phone is. It's... Com it's, it's it's crazy, honestly. I, I was Some... trying to call her a minute ago, she wasn't answering. <laughs> Someone was saying earlier, like when we were kids, and obviously Nadia and I are older than you, that with the phone rang in the house, there was excitement, you were running to get yeah. I used to push my sister yeah. down the stairs trying to get there first, because in case it was a boy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what about your kids, Miley? Um, So, if there are lots of missed calls, I know my daughter worries. She says there's nothing scarier than seeing loads of missed calls from yes. me, correct? Oh, However, <laughs> my daughter doesn't like using the phone. Now, she's 16 and I've got a 12-year-old daughter as well, she's got a phone. But I just think it's a different time now. Yeah. I, mean, I mean, when I say not even like using the phone, she won't even like want to call for a pizza. They don't speak on the phone. Everything is done now through apps. Yeah. So they just don't even necessarily... Look, we complain about it. I just want to speak to somebody yeah. if we've got somebody wanting to deal with. But we just can't get hold of but people But, you know, anymore. maybe the nice thing about it, when I'm... Because I was looking at my phone when we were talking about this, you know, and actually I've got lots of calls from my kids. It just alternates. But although they don't like talking so much, and you're right, they rubber you mm. on the phone, we have great conversations by text yeah. that maybe... And you've said this before, Funny. Nadia, haven't you, that actually, although sort of the speaking thing might be a bit difficult, the texting is really useful. Well, sometimes in relationship stuff with the kids, when you might want to yeah. say something, you're worried about them, I've always found texting, actually, because they don't want to look at you, do they? And they don't want to be, like, confronted with anything. I think that's good. But I get really frustrated when they might be having a situation with a friend or boyfriend or whatever, and you have a long conversation with them about how they might approach it. You say, go on, then. Call them. It's like... <laughs> oh, oh, it's like it's like I've thrown a bucket of sick over them. The very idea that we'd pick up the phone and speak to oh, you've got no idea because it's the most uncool I thing. Don't know but that the is. thing is, the thing is, when know. they do pick up the phone, about done about yours, but my son's got a habit of <laughs> holding the phone like this. <laughs> He's like, yeah, yeah, I'm good. You're good, yeah. I'm like, do you know you're supposed to hold the phone to your head? <laughs> <laughs> Every conversation, yeah, I'm on my way, and I'm like, why, why yeah, are you putting that's it? That's so true. Why do you people do that? Do you not think it was the Apprentice? Remember when? The Apprentice became yeah, the really sort of popular. Well. And everyone kind of yeah, walked about like that. I think that. that's what it is. I mean, for me, when I was growing up, the phone was we, we didn't get to use it as much. But I just remember old school, like my days, nineties. It was the excitement of making your voice, your voicemail 
um, answer oh, machine. Oh, yeah, yeah. Like, I'd usually, especially you'd have, like, R&B, you'd have your hip-hop song. But Wait, the like, you'd have a backing track a to your voice backing track. I used to have Joe Jodeci, <laughs> H-Town, <laughs> Mary J. Blige. But the problem is, with those R&B tunes, the intro is as long as hell, OK? <laughs> so by the time you got to leave your number, your 20p in the phone box would cut out. <laughs> And you'd have no money to leave an answer show, but you, we were... So was it really important to choose the right tune because it was you, saying something listen, about you? Listen, you had to choose the right tune, you had to say the right <laughs> so word. So what would it be? Come on, then. It would be like, so imagine, like, um, what's the Jodie's song? Um, oh, I can't say that live on it. Um, <laughs> um, I'm trying to think of one of their songs. Forever, my lady. So that would come on, it would be there. It's like a dream. <laughs> and then I'd be like, I'm not available at the moment. <laughs> This is fantasy. <laughs> and then you'd be like, leave your number. <laughs> and then it would go, Duh! and then you'd be like, and everyone would be like, oh my gosh, I heard your voicemail. <laughs> yeah. I'll call you now. I call just want to get your voicemail we now. We all used to do, we used to talk with each other, like, oh. what tune you're playing, Little Kim, all the tunes that was the latest, because I think it was showing an extension of your personality. Yeah. And the kids of today are missing out on that. Yeah. Wow. That was our social media. <laughs> <laughs> if I had a voicemail like that, I think I'd be charging for it, to be honest. <laughs> uh, naming parenting styles after animals has apparently become all the rage, apparently, from dolphins to elephants to everything in between. So, uh, if you're a strict parent, we've got them here, you are called a tiger parent. I think we've heard that one. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you follow a more laid-back parenting style, it's known as jellyfish parenting. Uh, we've also got um, dolphin parenting. What's that? Elephant. What's a dolphin? Firm yet flexible parent who relies heavily on social communication and interaction. Dolphin. Their goal is to be centred around balance. That's a word salad, isn't it? What the yeah. heck does that mean? <laughs> I mean, seriously, what does that mean? Can I think you... the whole thing is so tricky because they keep trying to put parents into boxes. Like, you can't put kids into boxes. You can't yeah. put parents into boxes because... I feel I have to parent differently for each child. Oh yeah. They've got different requirements and one needs more of me in a different way in than Different the other. stages of life. Definitely, because yeah. I've got a four-year-old, a 12-year-old and a 16-year-old. And what the 16-year-old needs is definitely not what the four-year-old needs. So, mm. I don't know, I'm a jelly elephant, tiger, all of the above. <laughs> well, I was thinking chameleon if we've got to go for animals, or shapeshifter, or whatever. Shapeshifter parent. I mean, it's like there isn't a set of rules. You know there's that cliche, oh, your parenting doesn't come with a manual. Yeah. That's the truth. Yeah. And so, really, it's working on instinct most of the yeah. time, isn't it? Yeah, so but we uh, seem to want a set of rules that the, just doesn't exist. I feel like the problem is with this modern, new-age parenting, it, it makes parents feel guilty or uncomfortable or, like, you know, judged, because the reality, like you said, we are learning, unfortunately, on the job. I know. Um, so Can you imagine your mum feeling guilty? My mum. My mum. <laughs> <laughs> Go in your room. Go in your room. That was it. <laughs> in fact, my mum didn't have to tell me go to the room. She'd give me the straight look. <laughs> <laughs> and I knew what time it is. I, you know, I grew, the, for me, I don't know what it was called back then, hardcore Jamaican parenting, that, that in itself. But having the discipline, I think it worked for me. Each child, like you said, is different. My mum was hardcore. There was no playing around. Don't make her repeat herself twice. But then the love that she gave me was so fulfilling. Mm. I mean, the food, everything, the celebrations, the laughter. For me, I, it worked out well Do you think for we've me. gone a bit yeah. soft on parenting? I think we <clears> know <throat> so much. Like... <laughs> <laughs> but we know so much and our kids Shall I go know to my so room? <laughs> 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 Sorry, but I think yeah, a lot of our confidence much. gets taken away as parents. And I think, that, you know, my, my daughter was, every time I, I come up with something, she says, did you learn that from TikTok? You're watching those <laughs> psychology. But I, I am. Yeah. I want to I know, you know, as much as I can and have the tools to, to, to deal with as much as I can, but it just feels so difficult sometimes, you know? And also, you're also, I think, relying on other parents. You know, if, mm. I, if I lay down some rules and other parents say that it's OK, and my daughter will then think I'm the worst parent in the world because the bedtime or she's allowed her phone at this time or she's allowed to go somewhere else, like, it, it, it's like you have to all work together. Yeah. I, think the issue, I think the issue is we've got so much other people parenting our children. Social yeah. media, media, yeah. the government, yeah. and they're not in the household, you know, and then there's certain things, facilities that's not there for them. But mm. I think, you know, something we were saying, it takes a, a community oh, God, to raise does, yeah. these children. The we're seeing this and what's going on and also, now. And, and they do need an adult. I think, yeah. you know, you've got to remember, a lot of children, this is not in any way, you know, um, 
assuming they don't know what they're doing, but you don't get your frontal lobe. It doesn't fully develop until you're 25. Yeah, the, yeah. Wow. So it's no, through, through no fault of their own, but someone still needs to be the adult making those decisions, especially the emotional mm. decisions. Which is sometimes why, you know, because we've kind of said, like, back in the day, you say, go to your room. Why? Because I told you to. Right, and in modern times we say, well, actually, that's not Take enough. You've got time. to explain to children. Yeah. But actually, if we're talking a different language, yeah. and I think we often are, because, you know, we're whatever age we are, mm. we're middle age or whatever, and you're talking to a teen who's coming from a completely different perspective, maybe the most effective thing is because I said so. Because mm. that is the authority, because... They're not going to believe you anyway, or they're not going to accept it. You could sit and explain until the cows come home. But then, how do you home, enforce because what I you said think? So that's really tricky. Well, her mum, her mum enforced it. But that was before. It. And Did now... your mum enforce it? Yeah, our Filipino mum. It's the same kind of. I had the look. I think we have to find the things that we know. You know, whether it's taken away a certain item, whether it's shown them that their their behaviour there is a consequence. Regards to maybe you can't go out this weekend, but there has to be something. There has to be some kind of form of, like you said, or um, personally, I think authority because you know once they get to a certain age, they're out of the house making decisions from what they've learned in the house. Yeah. You know, and we are living in kind of crazy times, so we need to yeah. make sure that we can, whether you're a single parent, two house parent, or whether it's a sisterhood, uh, a brotherhood that's raising these kids as community, that they know a line they have someone that they think you know what this is going to weigh a consequence because yeah. if, we, if we don't then we're in trouble yeah. I mean Nadia you are there is no discussion for my mum I'm just remembering what her version of up to your room was she would just come behind us and we'd like be charging up the stairs while like she's slapping yeah. you up and I always remember I'd get carpet burn on my cheek oh, because we're trying to go so <laughs> did you ever get I a backhand can... did you get a backhand no, not the back, no, back the front. No, the back hand on your no, mouth. No, I never got that, oh. no. Uh -huh. But my city... <laughs> but the soap in the mouth for swearing... But, but did it work? Your mum being strict I like that, like did it work? Part. Yeah. And as soon as we were 18, she suddenly started swearing, which I felt very, very <laughs> cheated on, I have to say. <laughs> I, I'm not being funny. My mum's not alive right now, and I'm still scared of her, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Certain things I do in the dark, and I think, Mummy, I don't think you'd approve of that. <laughs> They become your internal voice. They, they do. But they, they say do. your parents become your Jiminy Cricket. Yeah, and we mm. know things have changed. There's certain things that's not acceptable that maybe was happening back in our days, and, and it is about and changing that. that and this you know. is a reassuring thing. Some of the things my mum and dad said to me that I completely dismissed, even now, are coming to the forefront of my brain. Mm. Yeah. So you might think it's all just going into the ether, but I, I, it going comes in. back. So yeah. True. Can you remember one thing, one thing that was on repeat that your parents said to you? Because what I come back to, my dad would always say, you're going over the score, young lady. You're going <laughs> over the score. That was always what he yeah, used to say. My mum used to off. always say, be careful of the price. All I want is your sugar. <laughs> <laughs> to close that discussion <laughs> still to come we're discussing our hobbies but can you guess uh. which one of us would love to spend <laughs> hours and hours with robson green by a lake holding a rod oh. <laughs> and would you discourage your child from saying i do we're discussing the concept of marriage and debating whether it's still seen as a lifelong commitment we'll see you soon <laughs> to come as a recent survey reveals reading and cooking to be the top most popular hobbies in the UK. We'll be sharing and showing you what we like to do in our spare time. And you won't want to miss this. Uh, Mylene will be... Stop for now for nawing, for goodness sake. <laughs> Mylene will be treating us to a special musical performance later on as well. <laughs> It's competition time now, and how do you fancy getting your hands on one of our biggest prizes ever? Mm. Josie Gibson has all mm. the details. Stand by. It's the biggest prize of the last two years. I'm on the Costa del Sol checking out how that amount of money would change your life. It's Friday, and we're better placed to come than a bar. I'm finding out what life in the sunshine could feel like and owning a business in the sunshine. So I've come to this bar that is up for sale. I'm talking to local estate agent Max. Max, tell me a little bit about this bar. 
Well, the good thing about this bar is that it's on the prime location. So it's an only five minute walk to Porta Banus, where it's always very busy. Um, it's also in a very local area, where it's always busy in this bar. And how much is it for sale for? It's on the market for 900,000 pounds, so just under a million. What a life! <laughs> new life in the sun and a brand new business. Remember, it's up to you what you do with your money if you win. Buy yourself a new home in the sun or blow it all on a holiday. The choice is yours. For another chance to win £1 million. Text CASH to 82248. Text costs £2 plus one standard network rate message. Go to the website. Entries cost £2. Call 09068 782248. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge. Or post your name and phone number to CD38 PO Box 7 558 Derby DE10 NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 4 pm on Friday, the 20th of October. Good luck. Now, when it comes to marriage, forget till death is due part. According to a new survey, 51% of women believe that although marriage is meant to be a lifelong commitment, it usually isn't practical. And among those aged between 18 and 24, half of them no longer believe it to be a realistic union. Wow. That is pretty big, Nadia, isn't it? What do you think? Are you surprised? Um, no, I'm not surprised because... I can't believe that I'm an old fogey. It has happened. <laughs> it I has. finally realised I am because there's so much that I say that my daughters look at me just so strangely, like I'm from another planet. Um, and I think more and more young people are thinking about the cost of marriages and, mm -hmm. you know, there's more, you know, the flow of life, who knows what's happening, what's going to happen. So I think just the nature of the planet and everything that's going on, kids just are very open-minded about stuff. I mean, my girl... Is that girls... a good thing, then? Is that a good thing? Well, I don't think anything is just one thing, is it? I, th I think it's good and bad. I mean, I, I always used to be of the idea that I would say, to, if I had daughters, you know, oh, don't settle down with the first person you're with, you know, and, and, you know, and take that swim in the sea and try all the fish. But actually, <laughs> my, my <laughs> eldest daughter <laughs> isn't that sort of person. <laughs> I don't know what's wrong with me. Thinking about the fish. Um, yeah. My, my Judy eldest... drifted off a little bit there, I have to say. <laughs> you were in, in the sea, weren't you? I was fully in the pond. She was in the fish. She was in the sea with a fish. Sea, yeah. What kind of fish? I don't know. I want something that would just snap. So... <laughs> <laughs> there you go. But you see, my daughter's not that sort of a person, and she's been like that since a really small child. My second child, I think, is. She would be like, well, let's see. But, but Maddie is, is very much a very, very loyal person. I could imagine her meeting somebody quite young and, and staying and with them. And wanting to take and the I step would, of getting married. Yeah, and now I'm my age, I wouldn't say to her, don't do that. Yeah. But I think marriage has to, is another thing you have to really think yeah, about. Yeah. But, Wait, Mylene, you're not an old fogey, that's for sure. I feel mm. like one. What and, would um, you say to your daughters? Well, look, I'm divorced. I'm, we've got a blended family, so my partner, he... Uh, we've been together eight years now, but he uh, was married as well. And it's interesting what you say, because children do see so much, and the biggest growing unit now, we used to know it as the 2.4, it's now the mm. 1.7, can't do the maths on that. Mm. The biggest growing family unit is the blended family. Yeah. So there's all these children who are growing yeah. up in these families seeing whether a, a marriage has worked or hasn't. And I think what's mm. so interesting about marriage is it's, it's the only contract that you will ever enter into in your life where you don't get a lawyer to look over it, or you probably don't even get your mates to look over it. I because think it's I supposed to be about it. romance, it is, isn't it? It's about, about love and romance. romance. Yeah. And if it all goes really well, brilliant. As we already know, one in two, they, 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 they don't go very well. Wow. And what you're then left with is an aftermath of you're standing there, you could potentially lose your house, you could potentially lose half your earnings, mm. and you, you're in this no-man's land and you don't know what your rights are and suddenly it all does start adding up. It is not something I would allow my daughters to and we've had very open conversations about it because I think you have to not treat the marriage as the business but the contract as one. Mm. Although there isn't one. So what does that but, mean in real terms? Let's say one of your kids if comes you and cheat, says... which is a breach of the contractual right. obligation, you don't get fined for it. You don't have an HR. You can't go, this has gone wow. wrong. You've just got your mate or you've got your mother-in-law, maybe, or you've got your mum, and everyone's got advice, but it's not helpful advice because it's not legal advice and you're still bound by the legalities of wow. it. But you're engaged, so... I am engaged, I'm just not married. <laughs> <laughs>
But I mean, so what, have you got lawyers to look over the contract? No, but when, when my partner, let's give him a name, Sim, he has the name yeah. Simon, Sim, very lovely man indeed. But when he, he came to live in our family home, he, he signed a contract, which is like a, not like a prenup because we're not married, but it, it was like a, a, like a tenancy agreement, I suppose, or a cohabitation agreement. Mm. And he was so sweet. He's like, I don't need that with you. It's fine. I'll just sign anything. And I said to him, no, 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 please go and read this. Please go and, and, and look at what the small print says, because then I know you know what you're entering into. And you, if you still walk oh. in with that, it's not about the romance. You can still have the romance. In fact, yeah. it actually gives you true clarity yeah. of, mm -hmm. I know what you earn. I know it's what you so have. Smart. I know what you're bringing the children. Yeah. Let's be honest, as they get older, mm. 16, 12 it's... and 4, they've got yeah. great needs. You just get blinded yeah. by the moment. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, and you. my children already mm. know that they can blame me. We've got an agreement. Yeah. So if they it's choose to get married, mama. Absolutely. Tiger mama, yeah. I've told them, whoever you get with, if, if you decide to get married, you tell them, you can't touch mama's money, it's in trust. Which, by the way, isn't a lie. Yeah. But if somebody looks at them and thinks that's a, that's a payday or whatever else, they will know that they're protected by the tiger, dolphin, yeah, jellyfish. Yeah. <laughs> I, it, I mean, it's Just a no very Just no commercially advice. minded approach. Because when Would you, you do think it, about it, we, we don't know. When we're talking about it as women, we say, oh, no, you'll get the house because you've got you the kids. And no, we always won't. say this stuff, but we don't actually it's know 50, what 50, right. 50 And sometimes it's not even 50 50. And here's yeah. the thing this isn't all about the women. Yeah. I don't want my son to go into a situation yeah. where someone could potentially treat him this way mm. either. It's yeah. about protecting all sides. And that's what a contract should do. It's it should, wow. it should. I just wonder how that matches up with the emotional feelings that people have around a partner that they trust and love. And I mean, would you be asking someone to look over the contract? I'm thinking about myself, not about the I kids. Know. <laughs> Do you know what? I just, I think, you know, unfortunately, we do live in an age where everything is short term, everything is temporary. And I, I always talk to both of my kids about trying to have their own first, you know, and thinking mm. about what you have before you combine the life. But, you know, what you said really sticks with regards to any other mm. thing that we sign, we look at the contract there is. And maybe there should mm. be, like, well, if you well, cheat... Let's say you had a nice is... boss. Yeah. And I would... trust this boss and I'm going to enter into this contract with my boss. And then the other the boss goes or something goes wrong at work, you'd be stuck, but you'd have still looked at the terms you of the contract. To... The marriage still stands. Everything was really nice and everything was flowers and, and, and perfume. And then suddenly it all went very wrong. They go off with, let's say, I don't know, the secretary, or you find yourself in sickness and in health and it's not quite like that anymore. What do you do? Mm. You're not protecting wow. your kids. And that's where the mm. breach and everything right, happens. Think... It's, it is about protecting you yourself. You can't enforce educating the Educating yourself. This is educating yeah. us. Well, there we go. Prina, <laughs> we get my terms and conditions. Something to think about. Something to think about. <laughs> After the break, we're going to be discussing a topic close to Mylene's heart, miscarriage, and how her own experiences made her determined to help others. We'll see you very soon. <laughs> On Wednesday, football icon and queen of the jungle, Jill Scott, joins team Loose Women. She'll be telling us what brings out her inner lioness, sacrifices she made for sport, and she reveals her wedding goals. That's guest panellist Jill Scott, Wednesday from 12.30. Women Live, keeping you company this lunchtime. It's Judy Love, Mylene Class, Nadia Sawala, and me, Kay Adams. <laughs> Still to come, we'll be revealing why having the number 13 in your address could be bad for your bank balance. I grew up in number 13. Uh, and from cooking to fishing, we'll be discussing the hobbies that we wish we had taken up and revealing the hobbies that we actually do. Uh, now, it's not every day that we share the panel with someone who's made history, but earlier this year it was announced that the government will be implementing changes to miscarriage law and women's health care, changes that Mylene Class has spent the last four years campaigning for. And Mylene, actually, we did a poll on this. We asked our viewers, do you think there's enough support for women after miscarriage? And it revealed a devastating 88% said no. Uh, so clearly there, there is need for change. Mm. But in terms of support, what kind of support do you feel from your own experience needs to be there that hasn't been there? So just to give you an idea of the level of PTSD that women who suffer miscarriages go through, it's, it's the equivalent of a soldier returning from Afghanistan nine months later. 
You know, we're leaving women really out on a limb here. And because it's like the last taboo, nobody wants to talk about this subject. It's such an uncomfortable subject. So rather than tackle it head on, we just sweep it under the carpet because obviously it's awful, but it's one in four pregnancies. We think it's around 20,000 women a month, but we actually don't know those figures because we don't have wow. any data collection. And it, there's, there's no data collection. There's yeah. no medical records on this. Uh, I first became involved in this, uh, the campaigning element, because I made a documentary, which was possibly one of the hardest things I've ever made in my life. Mm. But um, I'd been through four miscarriages, mm. four miscarriages. And you know, if I didn't get my son, I wouldn't be able to, to do this. And there are some women who really bravely still find the words and they don't have their rainbow baby or let's say their happy ending. And I, I, don't, I genuinely, hand in heart, don't know how they do it. Mm. But I made this miscarriage and I met with a really nice uh, MP, Olivia Blake, um, who's been campaigning for change. And I teamed up with Tommies. They were one of the people that I rang. I think it was my second miscarriage. They had a hotline, a helpline. And with their help, we have actually managed to change the law. And what does that look like? Well, previously, you'd have to wait for three consecutive miscarriages before there'd be any kind of medical intervention. Oh. And just to be clear, what does that look like? So you could have two miscarriages, have a baby, and then have to maybe have another three miscarriages start, until you have yeah. another baby. Mm -hmm. uh, no medical intervention whatsoever. 24-7 care, so if you live near an EPU unit, an early pregnancy unit, you might get specialist care. <coughs> if you don't, by the way, that's a postcode lottery. People deny that it exists. It really does. You know, in Scotland, for example, very few EPUs open past one o'clock in the afternoon. What happens if you miscarry at one o'clock in the morning? Mm. You will probably end up in A&E, which means you'll probably end up being triaged next to someone having a heart attack or having a nosebleed. There's just no place yeah. for miscarriage. It's so awful. Um, and also something that we're working on, which hasn't been agreed at government level, so that's my next challenge, is, uh, is data collection. We need accurate numbers. We need to know, yeah. has it happened to your family members, so we can then help you. Okay. I didn't know it happened to my auntie 40 years prior. She's always called me her daughter, but I didn't know she'd lost one. It's, it's just so hideous, and that's how deep we bury that pain. I mean, you were saying there about, you know, us not discussing it enough, and, Nadia, I hope you don't mind me saying you've shared no. before yeah, that yeah. you've experienced miscarriage, but you probably didn't even know that this was something you could even conceivably ask for support with. I feel like I've been to University of Life today with Mylene as well. The contracts, they're just reading this morning what you've been asking for. I never even had a thought that I could ask for anything. I mean, one of my miscarriages, which was my latest one, you know, when I went in and they showed no heartbeat, they, they said to me I could stay there, but that would be on the labour ward. Oh. But I didn't oh, even think that... I just thought, it. oh, that's my lot, you know. So I went yeah. home and I had a miscarriage there and then I didn't know what to do with the fetus, which is another thing that you've been well, asking for, that's isn't it? That's been included, yeah. Yeah, like... They again, call it the products of pregnancy. How cruel is that? It's, it's, it's a baby. Yeah. It's your baby. Well, and, yeah, exactly. And, you know, I mean, I, I ended up putting mine in the freezer because I didn't know what to do. But it's only this morning that I thought, well, somebody should have helped me to Did know what to do. Did you think of do. calling your GP oh, or calling no, anyone? No, no, no. Uh, and it was very painful um, having the miscarriage, and it was very difficult for Mark being there and not really knowing how to support me through it. But, but yeah, I just, I just feel, I just feel, time and time again, women's health is put right at the bottom. We don't even ask. We don't even think to ask. So I think it's so brilliant what, you've what you're doing here Thank because, you. yeah. <laughs> I mean, just the thing of never saying you're pregnant before three months, where does that come from? It's almost like because there could be shame attached to you losing that, that baby before three then months. Then that's when you need, the more, you need yeah. more help. At the oh. minute, there is something that's going on that the government will be able to look at in the next three months or so, but Tommy's are rolling out a graded model of care, which will basically give us a signpost as to how we look after women mm. in miscarriage yeah. and, and take it very, very seriously. The, the things that you're describing yeah. there, you know, the products of pregnancy. I had to sign a form just before I went down twice for a DNC where they removed the baby. I couldn't even hold the pen. Why are we making our women do this? Yeah. Why are we making them decide between ashes and prayers or scientific slides? Women putting...
babies in, in the fridge or flushing them down the loo. This has got to stop. We're, we are tormenting and torturing our women. We haven't even touched on the, the men and the well, families. Well, this is what I was going to say. I think, you know, obviously with this change in law, having that time to be able to investigate, it also opens uh, the, the dynamics of support for the partners, if they yeah. are men, you know, if they're women or they, mm. that they have someone to turn to as well. But one of the other things that I, you know, from family members who I know have had miscarriages, is that there's this, this they're stuck in the middle when it comes to phoning work and having that time off. Mm. Like, is it sick leave? Is it bereavement? And it's so, like, it's such an intimate And moment. when people are saying, oh, how many weeks? Or, or like, that's going to make like, a that difference. Matters. It's still but when baby. you want a baby and on the, the minute that you know you're pregnant, that, you are looking at the future of that child. And I think, I know some work's been done on that, but I think people do still make the mm. mistake of saying that. And it would be so yeah. hurtful. That's really. where we take it into classrooms. We take it into PSHE lessons. What is the language around it? What yeah. do you, people keep Keep asking me now, what do I say? My friend is going through a miscarriage, what do I say? And, and actually, there's nothing, there's not a single thing that you can possibly do to take this pain away, because it's the worst thing in the world, it's already happened. But you, but can, you can say, listen. I'm sorry, yeah. you can bring some food. Practical help, you know, is, is phenomenal, but we're talking about the men here. There's a lot of questions around male virility, dare we even touch the subject? It turns out that if men are having baths that are too hot, if they're drinking too much alcohol, if they're mm. lorry drivers or cyclists, I didn't even know any of this. Mm. You know, all of these things and are slowly also, being revealed. And also what you were saying about you could have three or four... With all my miscarriages, I never considered they could be for different reasons. None of I mine are related. I never considered that I could yeah. ask somebody to look at why. Yeah. It, it's And in certain crazy. instances, there, there are sort of interventions that could be yes. made... Progesterone. ..that would make the chance mm. of a successful yes. pregnancy much, much so more likely. So GPs aren't up to date, and this is not a slight at GPs, they've admitted it themselves, on, on the specialist side of miscarriages. Mm. Eight and a half thousand babies could be saved every year just oh, by giving oh. women progesterone. I took oh, progesterone. That's I took a normal. Yeah. And what about the, the sticky blood, half a junior? Baby aspirin. aspirins. I took baby aspirins. Took Klexen. I took everything. By Which, the end of it, yeah. it was my fifth pregnancy after the four miscarriages. I was rattling with wow. every possible drug that oh. would hold this baby in, and I still wasn't sure if I would get him. Oh. Mm. And there's women here who don't even know those options are available to them, and that's what is so important about mm. changing this policy. Well, that's, yeah. so that's why it's so amazing yeah. what you've yeah. done. Yeah. What you've and done well, thank you. Well, yeah. But also, and we've mentioned there are a couple of interventions that can happen, but, of course, it's different for every individual oh, yeah. uh, woman and, uh, really, you would need to have a consultation with a GP, which hopefully you have made uh, an easier path, Mylene, in order to find out what is uh, relevant for you as an individual. Mm -hmm. uh, but if you have been affected by anything we've discussed, you can find more information and uh, helplines on our website. Uh, still to come, we are discussing our hobbies, uh, but we're not all in agreement as to exactly what defines a hobby, are we? ever in agreement? I don't know if we are. <laughs> uh, does fitness fall into the category or is it a lifestyle choice? Some strong opinions on that. Plus, it's Friday the 13th, but do you believe in unlucky numbers? Would you believe it? <laughs> Clearly you do. We'll be talking about that next. See you soon. <laughs>
Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, I think so, she was just then, a sadist. But then when somebody keeps doing that, you start thinking, oh, what if the one day I don't do it? It's not... Mm. I think it leads to, like, all sorts of overthinking, OCD yeah. stuff, and I think that's dangerous. Miley, yeah. you're not superstitious. I really, really, really try to reason with myself because I don't want to be superstitious. Mm. But I just... Oh? I do do this thing with the magpies. <laughs> oh, I do. Oh. When my kids aren't looking and they've picked up on it and they know what I'm doing. Ah. And, I and also, when I was in the jungle, I had to put my lucky socks on <laughs> every time I did a trial. Oh, did you? <laughs> so, I don't know. But so, was your mum like that or your grandmother? Or no. Did you get it from... No. no. They, I mean, my dad would be like, don't be so ridiculous. But I don't know, because what if I don't just... And then something happens. Mm. But I'm really trying not to be so stupid. I know it's ridiculous. I know I'm talking it round and it's not the magpie's fault it was there. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, that is weird about the house numbers, that if you're number 13, you know, it it'll does. sell for less, and if it's one, it'll sell for Incredible. more. So there's enough people who oh, believe in it. God, yeah. Do you know what, for me, I do, especially your house, you know, if you're buying yeah. a house, I, I am quite particular with numbers. Right. Like, I want a particular number. That's the first thing I look at. Or when I get a new phone number, I want to look at the numbers. Yes, I do. Um, really? Yeah, I do, and I've Does changed... Does that come from your... From your mum? No, it just... just come from me being ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> but one of the, the, the superstition things, like, growing up, was, yeah. like, don't put your, your your handbag on the floor, you won't have no money. Oh, so yeah, I'm constantly walking around that. with this handbag saying, listen, <laughs> I just got the money, OK? So I, I don't want to lose it. So and I'm, I, sometimes I go into places and they think I'm being stush. Right, because stush, stush like, <laughs> what's another word for stush? So I'm used for show off, yeah. The All right, okay, stush. Show off. I might have a little designer <laughs> bag, and I'm like, oh no, I don't put my bag on the floor. It goes, oh, I'm sorry, but it's not because it's a brand. It's just because of this whole superstitious that if you put your bag on the floor, you won't have sometimes money. you hurl yourself mm, on the floor to I, get it. It's I, not very stushy I'm then. Bad. But yeah. thirteen for me is not a problem. I find when I was growing up. My mum would always, like, win things on the, yeah. on the 13th. Oh, we love 13 yeah. in our family. We moved into number 13 on the 13th day of the month on my brother's 13th birthday. Wow. And, and he was born on the 13th. Wow. Yeah, so it's definitely our lucky number. We don't live there anymore. Uh, competition <laughs> time again. <laughs> Josie Gibson has all the details of how you could win a million pounds. We have a massive one million pounds to give away. I'm on the Costa del Sol checking out how that amount of money would change your life. What would you do with a million pounds? Help my family and invest in businesses. Well, if I was being sensible, I would buy off-plan villa, double my money in three years. Really? You're and then you can come back to me in three years and say, what would you do with two million? I'd probably buy at Penthouse on the beach, look at the sea every day when I wake up. I would go down to Porto Venus and I would spend lots of money in all of the fabulous designer shops. Buy a nice diamond ring, maybe a Rolex. You could get quite a few for a million. I certainly could. Remember, it's up to you what you do with your money if you win. Buy yourself a new home in the sun or blow it all on a holiday. The choice is yours. For another chance to win one million pounds, text CASH to 82248. Text costs two pounds plus one standard network rate message. Go to the website, entries cost two pounds. Call 09068 782248. Calls cost £2 plus your network access charge. Or post your name and phone number to CD38 PO Box 7 558 Derby DE10 NQ. Entrance must be 18 or over. Lines close at 4pm on Friday the 20th of October. Good luck. <laughs> Miley here without asking her to play the piano for us. Wow. We had to twist her arm, but we absolutely insisted. Oh, I Come bet on you back could pull anyone at a party, couldn't you? I know. Well, My party kicked the terrible. Yeah. Well, they are. They are <laughs> really <laughs> terrible, we I have to say. We would try to yeah. play the piano. <laughs> <laughs> no. We could yeah. play a little band together. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah. But we were just looking for an excuse to meet you. I've got it again. I've got that thing again. Oh, you can't see him. We were just looking for an excuse to get you to play the piano, talking about hobbies. Mm -hmm. But it has been revealed that having a hobby is linked to increases in happiness and life satisfaction. Oh. I don't know whether you would class that as your hobby or not, Miley. Do you because, know what? I mean, really it's a really one, because I, I don't have a hobby, but that's my hobby. Mm. Yeah. So is that my job that became my hobby, or did my hobby become my job? I don't know. I just, I just I love playing, and then if people ask me to play something specifically for a job, then that's brilliant. Yeah. Would you so ever just play envious. just for yourself, like to chill yeah, out, sometimes. to get away from, you know, the stresses of life? Because I suppose that's my idea of a hobby. Mm. Is it what your definition is, I suppose. Yeah, it's yeah, about something it? I think that's ring fence from the rest you, of the world that is you. just a little yeah. bubble. I mean, I, I, I <laughs> this is pathetic of me, but. I have got a great en well not an envy, but I so admire you for your I had pure jealousy. Pure jealousy <laughs> for the way that you play the piano. When I was 24, I can't play a blooming note, not a note. Um, but I got the opportunity to buy this baby grand piano. Wow. Really cheap when I was 24. Couldn't play a note, nowhere to put the blooming thing, but I bought That's it. Pretty big. I've got it, I've still got it. It's and beautiful. I thought when I retire, this is when I was 24, I am gonna learn to play that piano. You've still got it. I haven't done it yet. <laughs> but I still might, because that's always been my dream, to be able to sit you there. You should yeah. just do it. Do you know what they say? Anything. Ten minutes a day, anything, you'll be good yeah, at it. Yeah, definitely. Well, they say that's that where I fall down. Yeah. yeah. It's the consistency, isn't it's it? It's tricky mm. Yeah. Mm. Do, you, do you have a hobby that you would class as a... I think, obviously, yeah, I'm looking at... I, I really like boxing when I go and do boxing with Marcus. <laughs> yeah. No, I do, because I feel She's so good. really powerful with it. Yeah. I haven't been able to do it the last couple of months of training, but... Um, with touring, but I've been really powerful and it's a moment that I zone out. But if I really am honest with you guys, if there's one thing I would, I think I'd really love to do is fishing. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I really? Think, yeah, no, I, I be, you can ask any of my friends. That got a laugh. I would, I, 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 I don't know why. Because of your I high just, energy. You know what, you're talking about Robson, it was his show mm. that was on, like, years before I was doing TV, at a fishing show. Yeah. And I remember watching it and just being, like, really drawn in. Any fishing show that comes on, I really like oh sitting down and watching. I just imagine myself with my long boots, right? Mm. <laughs> It's got to be a clear river, though, <laughs> and just there with my whole outfit. Can we can't. We're, can't, we're want... moving into fashion yeah, now. Yeah, and I want, I want binoculars. <laughs> I don't know why, because it's not bird watching, but I want them anyway. <laughs> and I just imagine myself throwing the thing <laughs> and just sitting there with the peace and tranquility and seeing the little fishes and... Eating the fish. Can yeah. I put a request out to the producers now? We need blue women to go fishing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah we yeah, need yeah. to make this, don't yeah. 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 Yes, think, we're I going think, fishing. Because the thing is, I reckon there's lots of hobbies or things that we would like to try, but, you know, depending on where you're from, your age, what you've been around, yeah. you think that it's something that is not open to you. Yeah. So, I, for me, hobbies is about finding something that settles my mind, mm. I can have peace, and actually breaking a barrier and doing something different. Absolutely. So, yeah, take yeah. me fishing. Yeah, take me fishing. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, listen, uh, Mylene, you're so impressed as with your piano playing, but oh, prepare to be even more impressed. Am I right in thinking that you could do a kind of special <laughs> trick with it? Go, go, go on quickly. We've not got long. Wait till you see this. Wait till see this. Here we go. Okay, are you ready? Are you ready? Oh, oh my God. Oh, my oh, God. Oh, she can do it backwards. today, next week, Vogue Williams oh, and Spencer it. Matthews will be here, as well as Rochelle Humes. Have a fabulous weekend. <laughs> yeah.